You know, Texas rejected more than 27,000 mail-in ballots this month. No place had more issues during the primary than Houston. And the former elections administrator there is Chris Hollins. He says the most significant parts of the new Republican passed voter laws, they will not be noticeable until November. Hey, Chris, welcome back to Inside Texas Politics. Uh, you're running for mayor of Houston next year, but let's talk about your former employer for a moment, Harris County. This month, it had broken machines. It was late and reporting vote totals. There were 10,000 votes that didn't get added to the to the final count for uh, for quite some time there. You've led that office or shake up in the office now. What would you suggest that needs to be done to right the ship there? Yeah, well, hey, Jason, first of all, thanks for having me again. It's always a pleasure to join you on the show. Look, I'm passionate about voting rights. I'm passionate about voter access. And so I would be certainly willing to, to offer any advice I, I would have. But I know that uh, they are planning to bring in some consultants to, to solve some of the operational challenges that are being faced and, uh, and to make sure that there's adequate resources in the department. And also, very importantly, that voters are being educated about the changes in the new law that have made voting a little bit more challenging and, and how to, to make sure that you can get to the polls and, and express your voice uh, through the ballot box this fall. Well, let me ask you about that. Thousands of these rejected ballots were Republicans. Do you expect the Republican-led legislature will actually tweak this law uh, next January when they reconvene? I doubt it. I mean, we had an electrical grid that got shut down during a winter storm and next to nothing was done to solve that very important problem where hundreds died. And so I don't have a lot of confidence uh, in our legislature to, to step up and solve these issues, but they absolutely should. Uh, again, we have our, our parents and grandmothers uh, and, and friends and family who vote this way because it's a safe way to vote. It's a convenient way to vote. And frankly, our entire state should have access to be able to vote that way. But because of, of partisan politics, now all of a sudden, you know, Male voting is is the new boogeyman that Republicans are using to instill fear in voters and in their constituents. And so our seniors and folks with disabilities are the victims of that. That should not be the case, but it is, unfortunately. Before we let you go, um, what are you expecting in November, considering what we saw happen this month in the primary? Yeah, well, frankly, some of the parts of the voter suppression bill have not yet reared their ugly head, and they will in November. A very important part of that is the partisan poll watchers that are empowered to come into voting centers and, and frankly, intimidate voters um, without any accountability or, or, you know, many ways to keep them from doing so. And so I expect that to be a real problem that we're seeing in, in communities of color this fall. And, uh, you know, my hope is that not only will elections officials be prepared for that and take appropriate action, but also our law enforcement officials will be partners in making sure that constitutional rights are not being violated uh, here in our November elections in Texas. Chris, we will be watching. It's always good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one, Jason. See you soon.